Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Growth Mode Marketing. You're listening to Demand Gen Fix, the podcast where our team of growth motors and our guests discuss the ins and outs of demand generation and why we believe it's the key to long-term sustainable growth, especially in the HR tech industry. Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Growth Mode Marketing, and I'm here with the Demand Gen Fix podcast, episode five. Today, I am joined by Erica Rhodes and Deanna Shimoda, and our topic today is going to be about random acts of marketing and why we think it is one of the biggest threats in your demand gen progress. It holds you up and it creates distractions and it just, you know, we need to really start focusing on exactly what kind of marketing we're doing. So quit trying to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. We're going to get into a little bit more on that. So Erica, if you want to start by talking about exactly what is what we're calling random acts of marketing. Good question, Jenny. I think a lot of times, I mean, it's very straightforward, at least to us as marketers, random acts of marketing. A lot of times people, they don't necessarily understand that they're doing this, but this would be any type of activity where it's it's a one and done kind of activity. You're creating content just to create a new piece of content. You're not, there's not necessarily a plan or a strategy behind it. So a lot of times we would find that these activities are things that are not metrics driven. Again, it's a request that came from so-and-so on the sales team. It's something that someone maybe on the marketing team saw and thought, Oh, that's a good idea. Let's throw that in the mix. Really what these random acts of marketing are doing, you're chasing that next shiny object. You're focused on one thing at a time and you're not looking at the cohesive plan or strategy behind what's the bigger picture and really what's our goal here. So again, as Jenny mentioned, you're just throwing things around hoping something works, but none of these different acts of random acts of marketing can necessarily be proven um, data-driven successes. And I think really what that comes down to is your direction it just becomes very disjointed And when you look back at something like this, we'll continue to see the fact that these different acts of marketing, these different um, tactics that you tried may look like they weren't successful, um, I think, in the long run. And that's what we see a lot of times when we go into a client, we see that we start to identify and help them to understand where, where these things are happening and sort of how we can put a plan behind it and start to back some of these acts up with data and metrics. Yeah, I think it's so common. You know, most organizations have some form of random acts of marketing happening. Some are better at controlling it than others. And I think, you know, it's very common. You don't see the forest through the trees. But the thing is, a lot of organizations and marketing teams, they don't even realize they're doing it. They're working really hard. They're creating a lot of things. And at the end of the day, the results that they're getting can be pretty disappointing, you know, and when they take a step back and they're looking at marketing, they're like, but we did this and 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 this. What isn't working? And I think, you know, as you really think about it, like anybody that's worked in a B2B organization has, as a marketer, has probably had this experience. God bless sales. But you've got sales reps coming to you every single day who are like, hey, if I had this piece, hey, if I had this piece, hey, I have an idea. Like they are one of the big drivers of random acts of marketing. Sometimes the executive team are drivers too. Like everybody's got ideas for you in marketing. And sometimes it's about prioritizing based on who has the loudest voice. And I think the problem with that is you're starting to do marketing activities that are very disconnected. And so trying to do everything, you're not actually getting the traction that you need. And you don't realize it. You're just doing things, you know, because people are asking and you're trying to be a team player and you're really about, oh, I'm here to support sales and help them succeed. They're asking for this. Therefore, I'm going to do it. And I think what marketing teams need to do when they're getting asked those things is really to take a step back and ask, will this drive results? What will drive the best results? And be able to say no to things. 
so that you actually can stay focused and stop doing those random acts of marketing. I think another reason that companies do things is because they've always done them. Um, It's just a habit. It's like, it's expected. We've always done it this way. We, you know, every month we send out our newsletter. Every year we send out this special blog. You know, there's things that they do every year. And those things, luckily, hopefully, you can measure. You can go back and you can look at the numbers and you can say, okay, is this really truly successful or are you just doing it because it's something you've always done? You know, I think that it's always good to take a look at those things and don't just randomly do stuff if it's just for the sake of doing it. You know, that's just a waste of your time. It's a waste of your customer's time. It's, you know, it's not putting um, any kind of decent content out there. It's just you know, it's a waste for everybody if you're just doing it because it's something that you've always done. So take a look at those things as well. Make sure that it's actually something that's measurable success before you keep doing it every single month or year or whatever it is your cadence is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, let's talk about what constitutes a random act of marketing because I think it can take so many forms to the point where people don't realize, oh, I just did a random act of marketing um, because they're so busy, because they're moving 500 miles per hour, because they're responding and being reactive to what the organization is telling them they need. Like, I think sometimes it's not obvious that it's a random act of marketing. I think that a lot of times these random acts, as you mentioned, Deanna, it's something maybe that you, you know, that sales came to you with an idea because they saw somebody else do it or they, you know, they have a colleague who had good success with something and then they want to try the same thing. And, you know, or you saw something online and you thought, oh, that's a good idea. But are you really thinking of how it applies to your particular business, to your goals, to what you want to accomplish? Or is it just somebody else's idea that you're taking and running with and you don't really have anything to back it up? There's not any real, you know, solid content or data behind it. It's just, you know, let's give this a shot. Yeah, I I think it's also content for the sake of content. And what I mean by that is, oh, you know what? We probably should have a blog. So you start producing blog articles, but you don't have a strategy behind it. You know, you aren't necessarily thinking through the full intent of what are we trying to accomplish here? And you just start slapping up articles that, you know, maybe you're focused on getting SEO traction. You're producing content, but there's no real like strategy or cohesiveness around it. So your messages and the key things you're putting out there are all over the place. Right. And I think that kind of leads to really an inconsistent approach at a lot of these things too, where you don't have a plan. So as you're producing these blog articles or as you're producing different, maybe you're doing a video series, things like that, you're with that inconsistent approach, you're not really going to be able to accomplish your goals. And again, this goes back to at the beginning, asking what is your goal? What what is going to show me that this effort was successful and does it fit into my overall plan? I think that that inconsistency is a lot of times what we see people running into and all of us from the B2B side at some point or another can probably look back and say, yeah, you're right. I This was an effort I did because of a request I got and it was very inconsistent with everything else that we had within our strategy at that point in time. And Um, Did it really make sense in the big picture? Probably not. Yeah, I think even, you know, on the inconsistent theme, even the inconsistent execution in the sense, like, let's say you start out the year and you're like, we're going to do a monthly newsletter to our clients. And suddenly, you know, you get really busy, it falls to the wayside. Your monthly becomes quarterly, then it becomes twice a year. Like you're not consistently getting that content out in front of people, whether it's a newsletter or webinars or podcasts or your blog articles, you know, you're just not doing it on a consistent enough basis that it's getting traction with people because they don't remember for, you know, all the space in between doing them. And it's not like, oh, if I know you're doing a weekly podcast, I'm going to check every week, every couple of weeks, see what's new out there. 
if you're doing it quarterly, I'm going to forget it exists. I'm not going to check again because last time I checked, there was nothing new. And it just loses that continual drip and that momentum. And that's where I think that, you know, um, you know, that inconsistency comes from really not having a plan and sticking to it, you know, I mean, and that, you know, you're just saying, okay, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. And we're just taking requests from everybody where if you actually have a plan, you know what you're going to be doing every week, every month, every quarter, you can stick to it, right? You know what it is, you know what your topics are, you know what your content's going to be, and you most likely won't be putting it off and putting it off because you don't have you know, the right messaging in place or whatever, you'll actually be able to stick to that plan because you know what it is. Yeah, I think it can come across kind of as half-hearted efforts at times. Not that any of us marketers set out and say, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it half-hearted. But let's take social media, for example. You know, I think many companies think, well, I've, I've got to have social media is just kind of part of the standard must do these days. Some invest a lot of time and effort into doing social media really well. And some do it for the sake of, you know, for content's sake, for having it out there. But they do it so randomly and half-hearted that the content, you know, is all over the place and what it is. And it's not actually serving a real purpose. And so then, you know, my question, you know, to a company that's doing that is, Why are you even spending any time on this if you're not going to fully embrace it and make sure that it's driving results for you? Because I think it's probably better not to have it than to have this half-hearted attempt out there that your prospects can see and be underwhelmed by. What it comes down to is you can start to think about, yeah, some of these different random acts of marketing might seem like a little ask or a little task up front. But when that idea is half-baked and you start to half-heartedly execute on it, think about all that time and effort that was actually put into doing this, to doing these different random acts. And again, where are you getting with that? Nowhere in the long term. And I think, honestly, if we could put a number on that and look back and say, in the last three months, how much time have I spent on these random acts? um, I think people would be really surprised as you start to look back and think about all the time and resource. And that's not just creating the content, like let's say writing the social posts and going ahead and posting that. That's coming up with what those topics are. It's pulling in the information. It's creating the posts. It's actually posting. It's watching you know, for comments and things like that. Reporting back on those efforts. There's a lot of other pieces that would go into that in some cases too, where it's new content that you're creating, you have to also factor in a lot of times when these ideas are half-baked. And I I mean, this has happened to me before. I'm sure you guys could agree. But you get to the point where you start creating this piece. Maybe it's something sales requested. You start to build this out, gather the information. You interview subject matter experts. You start to write the content and put this all together and design it. And all of a sudden, you hit a a complete roadblock and someone decides along the way that, nope, we actually don't need something like what, you know, that's not something we want to do. Okay. Now you've just put all that effort and resource into a piece that is never going to get out there to the world because again, you, there was really not a purpose or a plan for that up front. Um, and I think, I guess a lot of us, I think, could agree that that happens, especially in the corporate world. I feel like it happens all the time. I feel like we're putting so much time and effort into building all of this content. Um, and you can look back at, say, your, you know, the past month and you can say, oh my gosh, I've been so busy working on this stuff. You know, I did this and this and this and this. And, and all your time is gone. You feel like you've just been putting in tons of time and nothing to show for it. You know, where's the return on investment for all of that stuff you did? It's just, it's out there, sure, but none of it ties back to any of your goals. And so it's, it just feels like such, it's, it's frustrating and it's such a waste for clients and for, you know, the people doing the work, you know, it's, it's just frustrating. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So true. And, you know, going back to something Erica said a little bit ago about, you know, 
if you measured the amount of time that goes into it, really made me think, that's so true. Because what you think is 15 minutes here, 30 minutes here, like small things that you're like, eh, no problem. I can get that out the door really quickly or I can solve that problem. Five minutes here and there, 10 minutes here and there, whatever that time is, seems really minor. But when you add it up over time, it ends up being a significant cost factor to your organization. And I know sometimes organizations will look at it and they'll say, well, it didn't cost us anything. One of our employees did it. It's not like we sent it out to an agency. Hello, I don't know any employees that are free. <laughs> like every person's time is valuable and there's a dollar value on that person's time is in what it's costing that organization. And so are you getting your ROI out of the time that's being invested in these things, it adds up. I mean, it's it's not typically trivial, but you think it is because it's spread out here and there. And it's not like you're spending eight hours all at once doing all these things, hopefully. You know, in some cases maybe they are. But you know, over time it ends up being a significant drain on resources that you just don't recognize often because it's it's hidden in small increments here and there. And then I think everybody gets frustrated, you know, all the way up the ladder because everyone seems like they're doing stuff, but you're not getting any traction, mm -hmm. right? There's no traction. There's no results. Nothing's happening, but everybody's busy. Everybody's doing their job. Everybody's doing stuff. But why isn't it working? Totally. And you know, I think another issue that turns into random acts of marketing is not giving programs enough time. As marketers who have a lot of pressure on our shoulders to help the sales team deliver results, it's hard to have the patience at times or even the support from the organization as a whole to be able to really invest time and effort into a program and wait for it to actually start producing results. And you know, I'll use demand generation, which we love to talk about as an example. That's not a magic bullet that starts flipping leads to you overnight. It takes time. It takes consistency. It takes a lot of work to build up that engine. And then you have to keep feeding that engine and revving it up so it eventually produces for you. And I think it's common for many organizations to say, okay, we're going to do this program. We're going to invest in it. We're going to see how it performs. And if it doesn't perform, we're going to move on to the next thing. I am all for testing different things. I am all for measuring the effectiveness of those things and moving on to something else if it's not delivering results. But I think it's so common to get impatient and not give it enough time. You know, and, and the question is, okay, we, we're going to do a digital advertising campaign. We're going to do a 30-day test. You do it for 30 days. You didn't get any immediate sales and leads out of it. Is that program a failure? Well, in a lot of marketers' minds, because of the pressure that they're facing to deliver results that are provable and meaningful to an organization, they're going to look at it and say, we tried digital advertising. It didn't work for us. We just spent $5,000 in ad spend and got nothing out of it. Well, you know, if people take, according to Gartner Research, 66 touches for the average B2B buyer to enter the sales process with an organization, and you spent 30 days putting ads up and they maybe saw your ad twice, you didn't give that program enough time. You know, and, and, and that's maybe a, an exaggerated example. It's not like you're going to put that ad in front of them 66 times. You know, there's, there's many other touch points that need to be happening and it's going to take time to get them there in many cases. But, you know, my point is you've got to be willing to give programs enough time to be able to prove that they're working before you jump to the next thing. And I think this is another common cause of random acts of marketing without people realizing it 
because they're jumping to the next thing they're going to test because clearly this one didn't work for us. Everything you're saying, Deanna, what this is going back to is that lack of purpose or plan in the beginning. And really, it's uh, again, just throwing things at the wall, hoping something sticks. And it's, that's really what the issue comes down to is, again, a lack of plan going into it. It's easy to give up on a program because there was no plan and it's quote unquote not working. What was the plan or what was the objective of that program? And that's, I think, again, a lot of this goes back to to being able to actually look at measurable results. And I think when things are done so randomly, it's really tough to do that. And it's virtually impossible to start to attribute marketing successes back to programs when there's not a a, a plan and everything is done randomly or half-heartedly. Or reactively instead of proactively. Right. right. You're just reacting right. to, to things willy-nilly instead of saying, okay, well, what's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? And, and like Deanna said, being patient with that and not saying, oh, it's not working. Let's just try something else. <laughs> You know, I mean, right. that's, that's where everything goes down the tubes. Yeah, for sure. So what's an example, you know, what is, what does random acts of marketing look like in an organization? Like, let's say we're looking at an employee performance management platform. What type of marketing that are, are they doing that at the end of the year, you could stand back and look at it and say, okay, that was somewhat random despite our best intentions. I would say one of the things that definitely would constitute random acts of marketing here would be in this example would be, okay, we need a blog. Everybody has a blog. We need to start putting blog posts out there. So what do we write about? Well, all random different topics, whatever comes up at that point, we're just going to, we're going to throw it out there. We have no plan on how we're promoting this blog or doing anything beyond that, but we're going to start a blog. That's one thing I can think of. And then, you know, social media is a big one. We brought it up a little bit before, but social media is like, oh, we have to have social media, you know, post, 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 maybe it's, you know, forwarding something or it's just, you know, liking something, but you have to have that social media presence. If you don't have a rhyme or reason to it, nobody's going to follow you. If it's just, if you're just putting anything out there or just, you know, copying and pasting or posting for posting's sake, which is just like the content for content's sake, you don't have to post every Tuesday just because it's the thing to do. Have a reason to post on social media and also pick the, the channels of social media that make sense. You know, if you don't have anybody on Twitter and you're posting all over Twitter, you know, what good is that going to do you? Look at how you're actually using social media and don't just randomly go out there and do it just because that's what everybody else is doing. Yep, for sure. You know, another random act that I, I often see is like the CEO will come to the marketing team and be like, we need to get a press release out there. We haven't done a press release in a while. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that's where <laughs> as marketers, we should be like, hold up. What's the purpose? What are we trying to accomplish? Do we have anything newsworthy? You know, and, and to be quite frank, sometimes the things that companies will put out as press releases are not actually newsworthy. Why are you spending the time and the money to get this out there? You know, the question is if we announce, you know, something that's happening in our organization. Is it really meaningful to the people that we want to read it or isn't it? Like I've seen people do press releases to announce that they're going to attend a trade show, exhibit at the trade show. I'm sorry, that's not newsworthy. You're not going to sell more products because you told people you will be at the trade show, you know, and, and the thinking might be we're demonstrating our commitment to this industry that we know this industry, we know this space. Well, you know, I would argue there are better, more impactful ways to do that than to send out a press release for, you know, breaking news that isn't actually mm -hmm. breaking news at all or, you know, interesting or relevant to people. Mm -hmm. I feel like that definitely is a C-suite level request. Yeah. <laughs> the press release. <laughs> Right. Well, uh -huh. and as marketers, we should be looking back to them saying, what, what's going to tell us that that was successful or what's going to tell us that that did anything for us? Because again, I think Jenny mentioned this early on, but that goes back to like, this is just what we do. 
It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, well, in 2005, we were putting a press release out about this trade show. Well, nowadays, there's a lot more efficient ways to get that information out there to your audience if you feel that's necessary to advertise that you'll be at the show or where you'll be or how they can find you. There's a lot of other ways to do that kind of thing than to spend the time and resource writing a press release and getting it approved and sending it out and all of that. Um, what's going to tell you that that did anything for your organization? The answer is going to be, I'm not sure. Right. (laughs) (laughs) The same can be said about emails. You know, I mean, a lot of times, you know, it's like, we got to get an email out. We got to get, we got to get in front of people. We got to get an email out. Let's just blast everybody. Let's, you know, I mean, what good is that doing if your content or whatever you're talking about is, you know, isn't focused? If it's, you know, you're just going to be spam, you know, everyone's going to call you spam. It's not going to, you know, be relevant to anybody if you just are like, oh, we're just sending an email out to get an email out. Yeah. Right. You know, and the same could be said about, you know, like doing webinars, doing event sponsorships, doing all these different marketing tactics that, you know, we're not saying don't do this marketing tactic. It's not impactful. I think, you know, the point is more this collective cohesive strategy that you have is everything working together to drive towards that goal. So if you're doing an event sponsorship, for example, what else are you doing to build brand awareness in the market? Because that's one piece of the puzzle. And the visitors who come to, you know, the event you're hosting or, you know, the activity or whatever you're sponsoring at a trade show, for example, they're going to forget when they walk out that door in many cases. So the key to make it not a random act of marketing is to have intention around not just that particular event, but what is the overarching goal that you're trying to accomplish? And in this case, you know, it's going to be brand awareness. Well, what other things are you doing to continue that brand awareness effort beyond that one event? Because you want to keep in front of them. I mean, to build real meaningful brand awareness and ultimately, you know, the goal of affinity where, where they like you and they trust you and they want to choose you when they're in market takes more than one thing. It takes more than two things. It takes many, many touches. And so you've got to be very intentional with the marketing that you do to say, we're going to get this done. And these are the goals and these are the things that are happening so that it's less random and more um, purposeful in what you're actually doing collectively from a marketing standpoint. Right. And I think the same goes for a webinar, you know, having that plan and that purpose for how you're using that content. A lot of times, again, I think, and not to just continue to pick on sales or other parts of the organization, but I think that we can all agree that a lot of times something like a webinar request or idea might come from another place in the organization. And somebody says, and maybe it's product management or it's sales, and they say, you know, we should really do a webinar on this topic. We should talk about this product in the market and we should do this, this, and this. And I'm going to present and I'm going to pull in this person to present with me and here's the plan for the webinar. Well, then as in marketing, as a marketer, we should all go back and think, okay, from a marketing perspective, how can we put a spin on this and create a plan in order to actually execute on it and make sure that the effort going into this one and done webinar is not going to be one and done that we have a plan for the promotion to get people to register and attend to actually execute and present and do that webinar. And then following the webinar, how can we take and repurpose pieces of that content to continue to use that to our advantage in the future from a marketing perspective? I think everybody stop what they're doing to do a webinar for our blast out to our email list and let's get people on this webinar. That's that's the random act. The going back as a marketing um, leader within your team to really think about how could we spin this random act into more of a plan and make sure that it fits within our goals and our mold for that particular time of the year, and really ultimately to have a plan there so that we can see success from this and 
again, leverage that content in other ways too. Yeah. And again, it's not saying don't do a webinar. That's a bad idea. That's not, not at all what we mean. You know, the point is how does this fit into the broader goals that you're trying to do? And is it creating a cohesive experience or a disjointed experience when people are, you know, coming to your website to find resources? Googling you, interacting with your company in any way. And then I think you also need to not be afraid to cut out the things that aren't in that plan, right? You can't, you can't be afraid to say no to things and to cut things out and to really pare down the things that you're doing so that everything that you're doing does fit a cohesive plan and, and works together for your ultimate goal. I, you know, I think we've talked a lot about why random marketing acts happen, but like in a nutshell, I mean, why does this happen? How does it happen? Well, again, I think it goes back to the not having a plan, you know, not having a plan, taking, you know, being reactive, just taking, um, you know, requests, just doing things one off, you know, that's, that's basically the whole reason it happens is because you're either you don't have a plan or you have a plan, you're not sticking to it. You're letting things get you distracted, letting things, you know, come up and take you away from the plan at hand. And being afraid to push back and question these different requests from the other pieces of the organization, I think is also contributing to it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, at times as marketers, we're trying to do too much, which means we're doing a lot of different marketing tactics, but they're spread out so much that there's no cohesiveness to them. There's no consistency to what's being done. And it just, you know, isn't having the impact that you hope it will have. What goes hand in hand with that when you're being very reactive instead of proactive is you're getting distracted and you're not hyper focused on what the goals are and what needs to get done. Right. And then the consequences of that is that you're not driving results. You don't have meaningful brand value. You know, you're not getting um, the awareness that you want to get. You're not getting the message out there that you're wanting to get out there that you need to get out there to meet your goals, you know, because everything's just all over the place. Ultimately, you're creating this vicious cycle. And I think this is where as a marketing leader in an organization, you know, at the end of the year, you look back and you say, again, I've done a lot of things. My team has accomplished a lot of things. We have done this, this, and this. Here's the list of things that we've done. But really, this is where kind of that data-driven approach and being able to attribute some of these successes back to marketing efforts becomes virtually impossible, is having that lack of focus and creating that vicious cycle of just, okay, this week, here's the request. Next week, let's do this. The following week, let's do this. And you're really not focused again on that that overarching plan or goal. What do we recommend to combat those random acts of marketing? Well, you need to know what your goals are to begin with, because you need to know that in order to create your plan. And those are like the two main things. I think know your goals, create your plan, and then you have to stick to it. You just have to, you know, you have to stick to the plan. Don't let things get you distracted. Don't, you know, let everything else take over your time. Everything that you th- are doing, you have to think, how does this relate to what my ultimate goals are? And is it worth my time? What is my return on investment going to be if I put this out there? For sure. I think you have to question what you are doing often and you have to be willing to say no to things. And I think that's a really hard thing for marketers to do. Like if your CEO comes to you and asks for something, it's okay to say no. If it's not in the best interest of achieving the goals. And, you know, that's hard for people because the CEO, you know, he has the power to say, no, you will do this. But every CEO I've ever known, if you explain to them and help them understand, and of course do it in a respectful way, but they're going to be like, you know what? You're right. Thanks for keeping me honest. Right. And, and as marketers, we are known to be people pleasers, right? We always want to be, you know, doing for others and making everybody happy and trying to get everything done. And we don't realize that actually saying no in some instances and giving, you know, expert advice is better in the long run than just always saying yes. And it gives you that opportunity to kind of, it's a a teaching moment within the organization, I think, as 
as the marketer, or as the leader on that team, you should be able to push back and also explain why you're pushing back and why you're saying no, ultimately. I think that one thing that would makes this conversation easier in the long run is the more you can sit down with your team and start to show the data and show what's successful and show why these certain pieces of the overarching plan are working and why maybe some things aren't. This goes back to question what you're doing. You start to really build up that trust within your team and people start to understand, oh yeah, you're right. Okay. Yep. Jenny told me that we shouldn't be focused on that because this is our overarching goal. And you continue to show those those data points and you start to sh- really get everyone to kind of... You have a mutual understanding of what success is going to look like and you know what what you guys have determined is successful within these different programs. For sure. You know, I think the key takeaways here, stay the course. Don't get caught in the cycle of random acts of marketing. Because if you want to be impactful, you need to be focused and intentional with all of your marketing efforts. And in the long run, it will pay off with bigger growth. Thanks for joining us on The Demand Gen Fix a podcast for HR tech marketers brought to you by Growth Mode Marketing. We sure hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more perspectives on demand generation and B2B marketing strategies. Plus, give us a like. Tell your friends. We'll see you next time.